Cool. So I'll, I'll introduce yourself. So, so we are in me um, and Roberto is going to talk to us about extending HTTP for fun and non-profit. Oh, the, the window is getting smaller. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everybody. So yeah, give him a big hand. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I am Roberto Polli from the Italian Digital Transformation Department. My work is to create a national API ecosystem uh, that is capable to connect public and the private sector. And uh, another of our goal is uh, to provide cross-border services with the other European Union countries. And today I will present how while writing the Italian API guidelines, we started contributing to the HTTP protocol. So the agenda is the following. After a brief uh, rationale about using API guidelines to achieve goals and results, we show how you can create a minimal feature landscape for your guidelines and identify relevant standards and communities to interact with. Then the strategy will be presented using two case studies. The first one is about writing an internet draft that extends HTTP, starting from an old specification needing a refresh. And the second one, uh, where we wrote a brand new specification uh, from scratch to cover our use case that was not covered before, which is the, um, the goal. Uh, one of the goals of the Italian digital strategy is to uniform the APIs produ produced by the, the all Italian agencies. And this is quite challenging because we have uh, well, 60 million people, mm, more than 20,000 public agencies, eight cities, 20 regions with uh, some uh, autonomy. And uh, to be able to create a uniform environment for uh, software produced by all those lights was uh was was not really easy the solution we found is to provide guidelines so that every agency should produce apis following those guidelines well when you write guidelines for the public sector uh, you have a uh, you have some risks because technical specification in government uh, risk to mimic a bureaucratic environment so you can have over complexity because the bureaucratic non-digital processes are just uh, converted to uh, convoluted APIs without a, a good redesign. You have time constraint engineering because a small uh, group of people should address um, complex use cases within a short deadline. Many times you have a closed development environment because the IT community is uh, rarely involved and sometimes you have even closed specification. And then redundancy because uh, you are building uh, stuff with uh, existing standards, but you are not keeping in touch with the original communities. So maybe you start to customize the behavior of some specification, you start customizing protocols without asking for feedback from the original communities. And this is uh, quite risky. So when you write guidelines and you have to write something that should be followed by thousands of implementers and suppliers, you have to prioritize your goal and features. 
when you prioritize your goal and features, it's easy to identify the stakeholder and the fe feature landscaping. You know easily which are the people you have to, to talk and who you ask, uh, who you need to ask for and who you need to keep in touch. So about the goals, we found essentially four goals. One, the first one uh, was a consistent design. We wanted that all the APIs produced by the agencies had a consistent design and uh, were based on a consistent rule set. And another one, very important, is schema standardization. Because when you have to create an ecosystem, you should uh, rely on standard schemas and the meaning and the semantic of every field and um, of the, the objects you use should be confrontable. For example, if you use a person schema, you should name the fields in a consistent way. You shouldn't use different fields for the same for the same um, for the same element and you should uh, split fields in a consistent way for example if you split always name and surname uh, every agency should split name and surname and shouldn't mix up those fields another theme is reliability and security we wanted to enforce a service management model to address cascading failures and we need the security frameworks that lower the legal risk for providers because if you don't have a consistent set of security rules agencies won't just provide api because they will be afraid of data breaches they will be afraid of uh, falling um, on some GDPR regulation and data protection issues, and then they will just um, avoid uh, serving citizens. And all this stuff should be done engaging and creating communities, both in government, in for developers, for um, between implementers and standards. So let's see a um, simple example. Consistent design schema, reliability and security. Let's make a grid. Start with four rows. Those are our um, preliminary goals. You can use your own. If you are planning an ecosystem, it is both valid for, uh, if you uh, work in a company, in a private company, you can follow the very same uh, framework. So this, uh, pick your goals and then on the columns, identify the relevant communities and technologies. For example, for the schema, for the design, for the reliability, we always have to confront with all the national agencies. We will keep in touch with other European countries and check let me see if your schemas for personal data are the same of uh, mine, uh, which are the different, how do you implement security features and so on. Uh, this column, the third column, uh, is the one on which we will focus today, is the standard one. These are the, uh, the column with IETF community, the World Wide Web Consortium standard communities. And here we will uh, put all the information and all the relevant standards that we are going to use to provide schema design reliability to achieve the schema design reliability and security goals. Finally, uh, we have communities. One community can be the Python communities, for example, but there are many other communities that can, could be interested in works on security, for example, on design, on schemas. And another one, we have vendors, communities, because 
if we have to provide features that people have to implement, we will have to get feedback from vendors. And this is very important. So again, those are the main uh, communities we identified, but sure, in your context, in your framework, you can pick your own communities. And then let's start to fill all the um, cells of the grid with the standards. For example, for the schemas, we decided to use between the others, those standards. The first one, RFC 7807, is JSON problem. It's a standard uh, JSON schema for managing error and issues. Then we have a standard for timestamp. We have one for currency codes and um, languages. We are, we are using J. Uh, so just uh, write down all the relevant standard that you are going to use or that you are interested in for your uh, API ecosystem. On the design, we relied heavily on the standard lat latest HTTP specification that is RFC 7230 and over. And another interesting community and specification is the Open API specification. On the reliability, we based everything on the HTTP with a REST approach. But now we found a missing uh, feature. In the standard HTTP, you cannot find enough uh, specification to provide uh, an integrated service management environment for such a large ecosystem. So we just noted that we had to work on that and keep in touch with communities and investigate. Again, on security, we had similar issues because there are many specifications. There is a digest header. There is uh, JSON Web Token, JOT, and so on. But there are uh, even draft standards that are not consolidated. And still, there is not a non repudiation framework. So, in HTTP, uh, with a REST approach, you don't have a very tight framework to define a non repudiation uh, protocol. And, well, on the other uh, column, the communities column, we have a set of communities we uh, engaged with during uh, this work. For example, on the security staff, we discussed it between ITF, W3C, the HTTP communities, and then banking API communities that was very interested in such uh, features. So we now have agreed then that strategy to gather and uh, get all the interesting technologies, relevant technologies, where, and where we can find the missing blocks. So let's start for the first use case. We started the first use case, and we started proposing solution. We research and analyze actual solutions, even if not standard. And we include in our study experimental work and research papers. We wanted to achieve, as we said in the slide before, a non repudiation framework based on HTTP. Uh, we identified the various building blocks for building such a non repudiation framework. And uh, we focused on the simplest building block that wasn't completely covered by standard specification. This was to ensure the integrity of the payload body of HTTP requests and responses. This was usually done with the digest specification. We did, um, but this specification, it's not, um, uh, it's not very uh, used um, recently. So uh, what did we do? 
uh, we started engaging with the community and this gave us a series of unexpected outcomes. Uh, we found that many implementers didn't use the digest header in a proper way. And uh, this was because this specification was quite old. And we then started to keep in touch with uh, implementers and other HTTP experts. And everybody said, okay, the digest could be a suitable solution but it's quite old and somebody should just rewrite it. Uh, but nobody has the time to do it. Then I volunteer for this kind of work and I draft a standard solution. I rewrite, rewrote all the digest header specification. I found um, Cloudflare employees that helped me in this work. And we rewrote uh, almost uh, everything, uh, adding details and fixing loopholes. Uh, we looked for um, people to help us. We uh, spoke with suppliers we, and vendors. We got feedback and awareness from many implementers. And then when we thought that everything was quite good, we got back to the IETF and they say that they liked our work and this resulted in the adoption of this specification now that i was inside the uh, http work group i learned a lot every even in on matters that i didn't know before and this helped me in improving our guidelines, even on subjects that uh, were not expected um, before. Then we continued to contribute to uh, the draft and to other specification, and we will do it until the digest internet draft will uh, obsolete the old draft and become um, a new RFC. So the trick here was to join the community not as somebody which wanted to get something from the community but as a volunteer for an housekeeping work for something that everybody wanted to be done but nobody had the time to do here we can see the digest header draft this this draft uh, provides a content integrity for various API, included banking ones. Uh, now it is widely used in conjunction with signatures and has now been adapted to the latest HTTP specification. It has better security consideration covering signature usage and clarify a lot of ambiguities. In all these paths, we learned a lot. So it, it was not just something that uh, we did to push our use cases inside HTTP, but it was even something that uh, we got from the HTTP community uh, that is very warm and that is full of very, very uh, knowledgeable people. Okay. Working with the first draft, we made friendship with the HTTP community. We had the opportunity to learn a lot of interesting HTTP features. And in this way, we got social with other HTTP experts. We become, became knowledgeable of the ITF process. Now we know how, which are the steps that you have to to do between the writing of a um, specification and the approval of the specification we got involved in other http specification that was very interesting and useful because in this way we learned a lot about security issues 
we have removed and fixed in our guidelines. And even we discovered the existence of the HTTP3 and other interesting features that are now work in progress inside the HTTP work group. So uh, with the strength of all these social relation of the knowledge we got in working on the first specification, we decided to work on another missing use case. While the digest header was a missing use case that was based on an existing specification, the second case was um, we, we worked in Greenfield because uh, there was no existing specification on that. And this is the rate limit header fields for HTTP. When you issue a lot of HTTP requests, a server may be uh, overloaded. And if you, if the server gives you just a limited amount of quota of requests, uh, you may end out of request and your request will uh, just receive an error. Uh, a nice way that could that the server can do for you is to warn you and tell you in the response how many requests you are left. So the current land landscape is that when you use API gateways, every API gateways returns this information in a different way. So there are uh, more than 12 possible uh, HTTP rate limit headers because there is no specification, there is no standards. The, the result is that many clients just ignore them and uh, their request eventually fails. We then wrote uh, this draft uh, together with uh, Alex Martinez from Red Hat where we standardized three rate limit headers. It's a very simple draft, but there are some complexities for the management of security of, the, of this kind of uh, draft. And then we started working with suppliers and cloud providers to implement them. In this case, uh, the, inter the interactions with the HTTP work group were not the core point okay, of this specification. The core point is to manage uh, the API gateway vendors to implement it. And then we have the Kong API gateways implemented it, the Red Hat API gateways implemented it, Microsoft uh, Azure API gateways supported us and allowed uh, to configure the, API, the Azure API gateways uh, to implement these features. We have libraries that are currently implementing that. Um, there is um, an API from the British um, government that adopted this draft. So in this, uh, in this work, the, uh, the interaction and the communities were quite different. And then the last slide, um, there are some other communities and drafts and standards we are working on. Well, there is the digest headers and the write limit headers I presented now. We worked in and managed to be approved even a couple of features into OpenAPI, just like the mutual TLS and the summary metadata features. We are working inside each, uh, the ITF to support and HTTP signatures protocol. We are adding a metadata in OpenAPI and um, still continuing to work with uh, suppliers and community to uh, implement features that we, uh, missing features that we are needed, that are needed for our guidelines. Well, I'm finished. Uh, uh, I hope you enjoyed the presentation. It was short, but, uh, I tried to make it easy. Uh, those are my um, references and well, um, feedback welcome and questions, questions welcome.
Thank you, Roberto. Um, if you want to drop a, a, a question, just use the Zoom Q&A uh, functionality, please. Um, we don't have any questions yet, Roberto. Let's just wait for a little bit. OK, in case um, we can even continue yeah, yeah, sure. on the slide, on, on the um, talk. On the, yeah, the talk channel. On Discord. On Discord. All right, I'll just wait a little bit more. And if not. OK, so if you have any more questions to, oh, there's a question here from Diego. With all these different institutions, what's the main challenge for integration? Well, uh, the main challenge is probably the legacy and the knowledge of technology inside the, the institution. This is why we focus on our work uh, um, with suppliers and technology providers. Because, for example, if I have products, off-the-shelf products that support a specification, institutions can just uh, use those products, those open source products, and uh, doesn't they don't have to get too, uh, too deep into the technology issues. So um, those are, I think, the main, the main problems. And yes, and the legacy. Institutions have legacy software, legacy architectures that, and there is a very, there are very long times uh, for um, dismissing and renewing uh, institution um, architectures. All right, thanks, Roberto. Uh, give give Roberto a big hand. Thank you.